Building commissioning. What is it? Why is it critically important? Ships and buildings. Building commissioning is a quality assurance process inspired by the commissioning of naval warships that can be traced back to 1798 in the U.S. Navy. A ship's commanding officer, as commissioning authority, was responsible for overseeing the design, construction, and outfitting of the ship for its intended purpose, or design intent. The commander's responsibilities extended to the selection and training of the crew and an extensive commissioning process that occurred at sea after christening and launching. In modern times, with more complex ships, the commissioning phase at sea can last as long as three years. The crew is fully trained, and any equipment flaws and operational errors are corrected prior to the ship being placed into active service, or commission. Building commissioning seeks to apply the time-honored principles of Navy ship commissioning in achieving quality assurance in the planning, design, construction, and operation and maintenance of buildings of all categories, commercial, industrial, institutional, and residential. Building commissioning can also take lessons from the quality principles introduced by Dr. Edwards Deming in product manufacturing. The goal is to embed quality in all upstream processes, thus minimizing downstream errors and flaws and reducing the role of inspection as the final filter for quality assurance. This upstream quality principle will be expanded later in the context of building commissioning. While there are parallels between the commissioning of new warships and buildings, there also are marked differences. Let's consider ships versus commercial and institutional buildings. A naval ship is an instrument for achieving effective warfare. Prior to launch, the captain oversees the planning, design, and construction of the ship by a crew separate from the crew that goes to sea. After launch, the captain and sea crew operate and maintain the vessel for its intended purpose after an intensive period of preparatory training. If the ship was poorly designed and constructed or the crew insufficiently trained, the consequences can be dire. A commercial or institutional building, on the other hand, is an instrument for achieving occupant comfort and productivity and can be viewed as somewhat similar to a passenger ship. As such, the occupants of such buildings typically are not the building's operating crew. Their commander, the CEO or boss, typically is not responsible for overseeing the building's design, construction, operation, and maintenance. Indeed, the occupants within a building are engaged in activities that are to various degrees coherent and interdependent like a crew or team, and the building is designed, or should be, to accommodate those activities. However, an operating crew quite separate from the functions and concerns of the occupants actually runs and maintains the building. Certain industrial buildings may be the exception. Furthermore, unlike a naval ship, occupancy and full operation occur without an extended commissioning phase at sea, although the operation and maintenance, or O&M crew, is rigorously trained in the months prior to occupancy. Finally, short-term and seasonal performance trends of the building systems are evaluated by the O&M team and commissioning authority within the first year of occupancy to enable a final operational tune-up and to attend to any warranty issues. This final step marks the end of the formal commissioning process for a new building. Unlike a ship, however, faulty design and construction of a building due to poor or non-existent commissioning typically would not lead to catastrophe. However, occupant safety, comfort, and productivity can be compromised, and O&M costs can become exorbitant. Thus, the role of building commissioning is not to be minimized or dismissed, and the analogy with ship commissioning is valid.